three quarter has been a big benefit to us in passing through the time away on our transit out to the moon. And it's uh, rather odd to see us floating like this in, uh, in Odyssey while it's playing uh, the themes of 2001. April 13, 1970. The mood could only be described as relaxed. Apollo 13, man's fifth lunar mission. The third scheduled to land on the moon continued its tranquil coast. This is the crew of Apollo 13. We should be there. Uh, nice evening, and uh, we're just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back for a pleasant evening at Odyssey. Good night. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like you to uh, stir up your cryo tanks. In addition, uh, have Shaft and Trunnion okay. for a look at the Comet Bennett if you need it. Okay. Stand by. Okay, uh, Houston, Houston, we've had a problem here. This is Houston. Say again, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main B bus undervolt. Roger, main B undervolt. Okay, stand by, 13. We're looking at it. And we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. And as I recall, main B was the one that uh, had a amp spike on it uh, once before. In the interim here, uh, we're starting to uh, go ahead and button up the tunnel again. April 11th, 1970, launch day. The crew of Apollo 13. Jim Lovell, commander and veteran of three previous missions. He had orbited the moon Christmas 1968 on Apollo 8. Fred Hayes, his first time up, lunar module pilot. Jack Swigert, command module pilot. Three days ago, he was on the backup crew. Now he replaced Ken Mattingly. Mattingly had been dropped from the mission because he had been exposed to German measles. He would watch the launch from Houston's mission control. Auto sequence initiated flight. Roger. Flight booster. Go. S4B pre-press complete. Roger. Flight booster. S1C pre-press complete. We're on internal power and we we'll go. Roger. How's it look, Econ? You got your space. That's pressed. good. Flight. Okay. MCC record us to flight speed. Ignition flight. Roger. Roger. Clock start flight. Roger. Let's just go. All in it. Roger. Okay. Fado has it look. Looks good here. Flight. Good agreement. Okay, boost that either. That's what he looks good, Frank. Okay, Capcom, we go on the ground. Okay, we go at one, Capcom. Get really the flight. Roger. Booster, how do you look? We look good, Frank. We go. Okay, Fado. We're go, flight. Looks good here. Got it. Looks look. good, Frank. Okay, Econ, GNC. Looks good, flight. Looks good, flight. Okay, Surgeon. It looks fine. Through Max, you and we go, flight. Roger, please. Go for staging, Capcom. Confirm and board out, flight. Roger. Staging, flight. Roger. Flight fighter trajectory confirmed staging. Roger. Flight booster then board out was way early. Okay. Flight confirmed, uh, number five engine down. Roger. Booster, you don't see any problem with that, though, do you? Uh, negative, not right now, flight. All the other engines are go. The next step in the routine of lunar flight was to burn out of Earth orbit toward the moon, then pull free of the third stage and dock with the lunar module Aquarius. At the controls of the command module Odyssey, Jack Swigert. We're hard docked, uh, Houston. Roger, understand hard dock, good deal. They pull Aquarius away from the Saturn third stage, the S-4B. Okay, I can uh, I can see the S four B now at the hatch window. Odyssey and Aquarius moved away from Earth toward the moon. Okay, uh, yeah, we've had a problem here. Five guns. Go guidance. We've had a hardware restart. I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main B bus undervolt. You see an AC bus undervolt there, guidance? Or uh, ECOM? Negative flight. I believe the crew reported it. We got a main B undervolt. We may have had an instrumentation problem, flight. Roger. 
And we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. Uh, the sensation I had uh, that I had felt a vibration accompanying the bang, uh, not a large vibration or shudder. Is there any uh, kind of leads we can give them? Are we looking at instrumentation? Or we got a real problem or what? We're reading uh, zero N2 pressure in fuel cell one and 13 PSI on uh, fuel cell three O2 pressure. Okay, Barrett, what do you want to do? Open circuit fuel cell one and three? That's for important. Shut down uh, uh, the reactance valve and I uh, ask for a reconfirmation since uh, when you do that, it's sort of irreversible. If you shut one of these things down, they uh, uh, only can be restarted from uh, ground support equipment. Yeah, that's, that's because of the AC. And it looks to me, looking out the uh, hatch, that we are venting something. We are, uh, we are venting something out uh, into the uh, into space. Okay, let's everybody think of the kind of things we'd be venting. GNC, you got anything that looks abnormal in your system? Negative light. How about you, Ecom? You see anything that, uh, with the instrumentation you got that could be venting? That's a firm flight. Let me look at the system flight as far as the venting is concerned. Okay, let's start scanning. Here is a bulletin from ABC News. The Apollo 13 spacecraft has had a serious power supply malfunction that could cause the lunar landing mission to be terminated early. I assume you've called in your backup Ecoms? Flight, say again. Have you called in your backup Ecoms now, see if we can get some more brain power in this We thing? got one here. Roger. At the moment, the astronauts are continuing to try to isolate their trouble. The late report says the spacecraft now is operating on battery power alone. All unnecessary equipment is being turned off. Okay, now let's everybody keep cool. We got the uh, limb still attached. The limb spacecraft's good, so if we need uh, to get back home, we got a limb to do a good portion of it with. Okay, let's make sure that we don't do anything that's going to blow our CSM electrical power with the batteries or that will cause us to lose the main or the uh, fuel cell number two. Okay, we want to keep the O2 and that kind of stuff working. We'd like to have RCS, but we got the command module system, so we're in good shape if we need to get home. Let's solve the problem, but let's not make it any worse by guessing. My concern was increasing all the time. It went from, I wonder what this is going to do to the landing, to I wonder if we can get back home again. Okay, Tom, I'm coming back to you. Flight. Go ahead. I think the best thing we can do right now is start a power down. Right about then, it, uh, it was quite apparent to me that it was just a question of time that the command module was going to be dead. You don't want to get fuel cell pumps off, do you? We can do that on fuel cell number one flight. Okay, well, let's make sure we don't blow the whole mission. Well, the thing that concerns me is starting is throwing equipment. We, we had a problem. We don't know the cause of the problem. Flight, I, I've got a feeling we've lost two fuel cells. I hate to put it that way, but uh, I, I don't know why we've lost them. It doesn't all tag up. Network from flight. Flight network. Bring me up another computer in the RTCC, will you? Uh, we got uh, one machine on the RTCC, and we got dual CPs downstairs. OK, I want another machine up in the RTCC, and I want a bunch of guys capable of running D-logs down there. Roger that. What all this means is only speculation at this point. First, though there has been some tumbling or rotation of the spacecraft, the astronauts do not appear to be in any immediate danger. I'll tell you what, uh, GNC, can you get somebody in the back room to try to figure out what the equivalent delta V is we're getting so that we can see if we can backtrack to see if we can figure out what's venting. Roger, we'll give it a try, flight. OK. When I looked up and saw both uh, oxygen pressures, one absolutely zero and the other one going down, uh, it, it dawned on me, and I'm sure Jack and Fred about the same time, that we were indeed in serious trouble. The only way to survive the situation was to transfer to the LEM. Flight Ecom. Go ahead, Ecom. The pressure in O2 tank one is all the way down to 297. You better think about getting in the LEM or using the LEM systems. I'd say this is as serious a uh, situation as we have ever had in manned space flight. We've always called the LEM a good lifeboat under those circumstances. If at any time in the mission, however, the LEM had separated, and we had gotten ourselves into a rendezvous situation or uh, the, the command module being around the moon, then what you state is absolutely true. It would, it would be a fatal situation. Tell me you're from flight. 
Go ahead, Light. I want you to get some guys figuring out minimum power in the limb to sustain life. The accident had occurred 200,000 miles from Earth. Lovell, Swigert, and Hayes rode in the lunar module attached to a lifeless command module. Apollo 13 had started as a mission of scientific exploration. It was now a matter of survival. Since the command module was dead, except for the oxygen and power hoarded for re-entry, the guidance platform of Aquarius, designed to land on and take off from the moon, would have to be used. The first milestone, and I consider this after the accident, I guess, more or less the survival now, the first milestone was to get alignment on the limb platform. Alignments are important, you know, because uh, without knowing exactly which way the attitude of a spacecraft is in space, there's no way to tell how to burn or how to use the engines of that spacecraft to get the, pro the proper trajectory to come home. The position we are now on the Earth-Moon plane, we have to go around the, the, uh, the moon to get back if we're going to use the DIPS engine. You, you would have had enough capability with the SPS engine, but of course we don't dare use that now. So we have to go to the back side of the moon and come back. To get into the correct orbit around the moon, the crew had burned out of a trajectory that would automatically bring them back to Earth. They would have to get back onto a safe course toward Earth. He needs to put his uh, throttle to men also, Flight. Throttle to men? Yes, he's at 29 percent now, roughly. This maneuver again was uh, completed on time, and because it was a manual burn, we had a three-man operation. Jack would... Uh, take care of the time. He'd tell us when to light off the engine, when to stop it. Fred handled the uh, pitch maneuver, I handled the roll, roll maneuver, and I pushed the buttons to start and stop the engines. Aquarius, and you go for the burn. Forty percent. Okay, Aquarius, you're looking good. Auto shut down. The first problem was solved. They were back on the path to Earth. But there were many other problems to be solved. From a building at Houston's Manned Spacecraft Center, systems experts coordinated the coast-to-coast -coast effort to get the crew back. One of the big problems was consumables. There would be enough to eat and drink. But in space, there are other factors. Oxygen to breathe electrical power to keep the spacecraft alive, water to cool the equipment and keep it operating. What we'll be doing till we get them back on the water is concentrating on everything that is de their, their lives are dependent upon at the moment rather than worrying about the accident because there's nothing we can do about that now. This, it appears at the present time that everything is under control and that uh, we have a safe situation at the moment. Hey, I want to say you guys are doing real good work. So are you guys, Jack. We are about 70 hours from home, and uh, we think we have uh, uh, the situation in control. We've projected the uh, consumables, as I've described, and uh, we have a plan for carrying out the rest of the mission, but uh, uh, there is going to be no relaxation at all as far as that goes from now until splash. There was a key decision to be made before Apollo 13 went behind the moon where to bring them down. Their present course would take them to the Indian Ocean, where recovery would be difficult. A burn to bring them home quicker would take them to the Pacific Ocean near the recovery forces. Bringing them home even faster would place them in the South Atlantic, again away from recovery forces. It was decided to take them to the Pacific. We have run uh, these simulators both here and at the Cape and at the contractors that uh, continuously ever since uh, last night. We've tried to simulate virtually everything that we've had the crew to do that, uh, that is non-normal that they've done. And uh, we've proven most everything that we've uh, been able to, uh, to run on the simulator prior to passing it up to them. There may be some details we haven't done, but at least we've checked the feasibility of everything we've done, and we'll continue to do that. They passed 137 miles from the moon. For Lovell, it was the second time that he had seen the moon so near. But there was no time for contemplation. There was another critical burn coming. Okay, look, at, let's, uh, let's get the cameras put away. Let's get all set to burn. So, we have one chance, Al. 
And in Houston, the newsmen poured in to tell an anxious world the story. Shortly after Apollo 13 had separated from the Saturn third stage, the stage had been sent on to a trajectory toward the moon. Its impact would be recorded by the seismometer left by Apollo 12. By the way, uh, Aquarius, we see the results now from uh, 12's seismometer. Looks like your booster just hit the moon and it's uh, rocking it a little bit. Well, at least something worked on this flight. I'm sure glad we didn't have a limb impact, too. Jim, you are go for the burn. Go for the burn. Roger, understand. Go for the burn. Guidance okay? We're good, flight. Control okay? We're okay, flight. Tell me. We're go, flight. Inco okay? We're good, flight. Ground confirms ignition. We're burning 40%. Boris Houston, you're looking good. Roger. Shut down. Roger, shut down. I say that was a good burn. Roger, now we want to power down as soon as possible. Understand. To conserve the electric power and cooling water, the crew shut down all but the vital life-sustaining systems of the LEM. I think the LEM spacecraft's in uh, excellent shape, and I think it's fully capable of uh, getting the crew back uh, I think, as we have found before, every time we've put the LEM spacecraft to a test, it's always done much more than it was guaranteed to do, and I think this is a good case in point. Conserve the consumables, cooling water, electric power. The LEM water gun was leaking, and uh, we shut that off. Uh, I guess it leaked about a quart of water, I would, I would estimate. But it took me about two days to get my feet dry. And of course, is, uh, I think you were all aware that the temperatures were going down in the, both vehicles. And uh, uh, it's made for very chilly feet for a couple days. astronauts will come back safe. If I may be serious for one moment and ask the entire audience for a moment of prayer for the crewmen of the Apollo 13. We'll hold silence for a moment, please. RCSA stands at 62% and B at 62%. I see we were throwing a hell of a long time without any sleep. We had to start thinking about getting people back to sleep again because uh, I, uh, I didn't get any sleep last night at all. Command module just slowly kept going down in temperature until I think uh, just prior to reentry, uh, it was down to about 38 degrees. And along with that, it was a, a sort of a chilling uh, coldness. The walls were perspiring, the windows were completely wet, and it, uh, it wasn't too healthy. I recall that we went in there to get some hot dogs one day, and it was like reaching into the freezer for the, for the food. So if you want my opinion of how they handled the situation when it happened, they handled it exactly like we'd expect them to. They, they were about as 
well on top of it as anybody could be who knew on what we knew, knew, which isn't very much, I'll have to admit. But I think they did everything right within the knowledge that was available to us in uh, a timely fashion, which is what uh, all we expected of them. I think they did a beautiful job of it. We actually had a third little sleep restraint, which Fred does then put on and buttoned up and kept a little bit warm. The astronauts faced another problem, their own exhaled breath. The lithium hydroxide chemical to take carbon dioxide out of the air was not sufficient in the lunar module. They would have to adapt the canisters from the command module to fit the hoses in the LEM. On the ground, an adapter was fashioned from materials the crew had available in the LEM. Cardboard from a checklist, plastic bags, and tape. After checkout in an environmental chamber, the directions for construction were sent up to Aquarius. At this point in time, I think the uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide was uh, reading about 15 millimeters. And we constructed two of these things and put them online, and I think within an hour, the uh, partial pressure of CO2 was down to two tenths. So you see that uh, survival uh, uh, now became one of, uh, of initiative and ingenuity, and, and it was one which the ground continually helped us uh, Long. We had all kinds of people on the ground trying to think of ways of, of extending our lifetime. There would be still another burn, a mid-course correction to get Apollo 13 into the narrow corridor through the atmosphere for a safe return to Earth. We're at burn attitude flight. College. Ignition. Thrust looks good. Shut down. Hang in there, it won't be long. There were moments when I didn't know how much consumables we had, whether we could make it back or not, but uh, uh, in a situation like that, there's only one thing you can do. You just keep going, and uh, you just keep thinking up where you can get more consumables. And uh, so that's exactly what we did. On April 17th, they prepared for re-entry. After a small course correction burn, they jettisoned the damaged service module. Uh, uh, uh. Copy that. And there's one whole side of that big uh, business. Is that right? And the whole panel is blown out, almost from the uh, base to the uh, entrance. It's really a mess. Man, that's unbelievable. Next, they got back into Odyssey to jettison Aquarius prior to entry into the atmosphere. I'm jettison. Okay, copy that. Farewell, Aquarius, and we thank you. Okay, LOS in uh, a minute or a minute and a half. Uh, an entry attitude, we'd like Omni Charlie. And welcome home. Thank you. Odyssey Houston standing by, over. Okay, go over. Odyssey Houston, we show you on the mains. It really looks great. Is stable one at this time. Riding comfortably. The vertical axis is 
Recall, Captain, that when I spoke to you on the phone, you said that you regretted that you were unable to complete your mission. I hereby declare that this was a successful mission. From the start, the exploration of space has been hazardous adventure. The voyage of Apollo 13 dramatized its risks. The men of Apollo 13, by their poise and skill, under the most intense kind of pressure, epitomize the character that accepts danger and surmounts it. Theirs is the spirit that built America. Your mission served your country. It served to remind us all of our proud heritage of a nation, to remind us that in this age of technicians and scientific marvels, that the individual still counts, that in a crisis, the character of a man or of men will make the difference. GNC, go. Surgeon, go. Procedures, go. AFD, go. Network, go. Computer suit, go. Raj, network, give me an amber. RTC on AFD conference. RTC on AFD conference. Okay, all flight controllers, let's play it cool.